Hi, and welcome to this introduction to PACT key sets. This tutorial introduces the essential features in PACT needed to create and work with key sets. We'll discuss what key sets are, why they're important, and how they help regulate access to PACT modules. Throughout this tutorial, I'll walk through each of the following topics. First, I'll introduce key sets. Next, you'll create, define, and read a key set for yourself. Then, you'll create keys and see a few important concepts related to keys in the online editor. Finally, you'll use keys to sign and deploy a contract, call a function, and run a deployed contract. After this tutorial, you'll be well prepared to manage keys and key sets for your smart contracts. So to start, what's a key set? Packed key sets specify authorization to different parts of a smart contract. They determine which accounts have access to update various parts of the program. They also contain keys, which are an important part of acquiring the signatures needed to verify a transaction. Having a basic understanding of how keys and key sets work, let's go ahead and start using them for ourselves. The first step towards working with key sets is to create one. Creating a key set can be done using the online editor within the environment section. To get there, navigate to pact.cadena.io. As you can see, I have the verification demo module open. You can find this code using the Module Explorer if you'd like. When you're ready, use the right panel to navigate to Environment, Data, Key Sets, and select Enter a Key Set Name. Here, you can enter Admin Key Set. And when you're ready, click Create. You just created a key set, and you should now see Admin Key Set appear under your list of available key sets. When using the online editor, this key set is now added into the browser's local storage. When you begin working locally, you'll write this key set for yourself in what's known as a REPL file alongside of your PACT file. You'll learn more about this in later tutorials. After creating a key set, you need to both define and read this key set from within the smart contract. You can do this using a pair of built-in functions known as define key set and read key set. Notice that our smart contract already defines and reads a key set for us. These key sets will guard the module logic. For that reason, notice that they're placed above the module and that the code will actually fail if you try writing it within the module. This is an important safety feature that PACT provides. The key set you created is meant to hold keys. These keys are used to sign and verify transactions that occur from within the module. To create a key, use the right panel to navigate to Environment, Wallet, and select Enter a Key Name. Here, enter Admin Key, then click Generate. You should now see the key name, the public key, and the private key of the key you generated. While one key is enough to get started, there's options available to you that use more than one key. So for practice, take some time now to generate two more keys. I'll create one named admin key two and another named admin key three. After creating these keys, notice that they're all available as checkboxes under the admin key set. This allows you to specify which keys belong to which key sets. Select each of these checkboxes now. You're now ready to define the functionality of these keys using what's known as predicate functions. PACT conveniently supports native multisig features with a variety of key set predicates. Alongside the key set you created, you can see the dropdown that allows you to select keys all, keys to, and keys any. These options are referred to as the predicate functions in your key set. A predicate function is a Boolean value function evaluating to either true or false. Predicate functions specify which keys need to sign transactions for it to be valid, and they're a lot like they sound. Keys all means that all available keys must sign the transaction to verify it. Keys two means that two keys need to sign a transaction to verify it. And keys any mean that any single key could sign the transaction to verify it. The keys that the predicate function is referring to are those you selected with the checkboxes. In simple smart contracts, you'll usually have a single key set, a single key, and a default value of keys all for your predicate function. Let's take a closer look at the code behind the key set you just set up. Each key you created has an equivalent JSON representation you can view from the result tab. Notice that this JSON object includes the name of your key set the public key of the keys you added to the key set, and the current value of the predicate function you selected. Keep this in mind when you begin creating key sets in your local environment. 
While the online editor provides the UI needed to create this for you, you'll use this JSON format once you begin working in your local environment. And you can actually create key sets using this JSON format rather than the user interface from within the UI. Creating key sets with JSON is done using the raw tab. You'll find this useful when creating applications locally that you want to test in the online editor. This lets you copy and paste into this box rather than recreating everything from scratch with the UI. To create a new key, specify a key set name, keys, and predicate function, similar to the format seen in the result tab. That's the basics of creating and managing keys and key sets. Now let's spend some time putting these ideas to use. We'll start by using signatures to deploy a contract. You can check this out for yourself from the deployment screen in the online editor. Before doing that, there's a few quick changes I'll need to make to the smart contract. First, you need a unique name for the module. I'll name mine Verification Tutorial. I'll also need a unique name for the key set. I'll delete the original key set and name my new one Admin Key Set Tutorial. I'll update the name in each place it's written in the code. I'll also remove my original keys and create a new key named Admin Key Tutorial. Take some time now to create your own unique names that are different from mine if you'd like to deploy your own smart contract. Okay, now you're ready to deploy the contract with your key signature. To find the Sign tab, select Deploy, and from the Deployment Settings screen, choose Sign. You should now see the following screen which includes the keys you specified in the smart contract. Choose a network to deploy to using the drop-down. Select the checkbox to sign the transaction and click Deploy. This will deploy the contract. If everything worked correctly, you should see this message appear. Head over to the Module Explorer and search for your newly deployed contract. If you're not seeing it yet, try refreshing the Explorer so that it appears. That's how you deploy a signed contract. Next, you can try calling a function on a contract that has already been deployed. To get started, try viewing the Hello World smart contract in the Module Explorer to call the Hello function. To call the Hello function, select Module Explorer, search Hello World, select View, then select Call on the Hello function. After selecting Call, you should see a screen showing its parameters. Select the Sign tab to the right of Parameters to view the keys available to use for signatures. Here you should again see each of the keys you have available to sign the transaction. Select the checkbox next to one of the admin keys and go back to the Function Parameters screen. Type Packed Keys, or whatever you prefer, as a parameter and click Call to call the function. After calling the function, you should see Hello Packed Keys appear in the Messages tab. You now verified a transaction using a key signature on a deployed smart contract. I'll admit, signing wasn't actually required for this specific contract, but you'll use this same process in the future anytime a contract does require these signatures. Why wait? We could do that right now. Let's try an example where you need the correct signatures for the module code to run. For this example, open Simple Payment from the Module Explorer. To do this, select Module Explorer, Examples, Simple Payment, and click Open. You'll be building a smart contract like this for yourself in a later tutorial. For now, focus on how key sets work to set restrictions on the module. We'll use these key sets to load this contract into the REPL, deploy the contract, then call the contract's functions. Loading the contract into the REPL helps us check for any errors and can help ensure it's working properly before deploying it to the blockchain. Deploying the contract puts it onto the network so that we can access it using our key sets. And finally, calling the contract demonstrates the contract's functions and key sets in action. So let's get started. Within the code, you'll notice the following built-in function, enforce key set. This function executes a guard or defined key set name to enforce a specific predicate logic. You'll see an example of this in row 28. Here's how it works. Before the module, the admin key set is defined in red. Once in the contract, a function named createAccount is created that takes key set as a parameter, along with ID and initial balance parameters. When running this function, enforce key set is called to check that the caller is the owner of the admin key set. If the caller is the owner of admin key set, the function continues. In any other case, the function fails. 
Using this method, you can check that the caller of any function is the owner of a key set that you specify. Try running this code in the online editor using load into REPL. You'll notice an error, no such key in message, admin key set. You can create a key set named admin key set to remove the error. Try again and you should get the following response. Coming up, we'll fix this error too. First, let's look at another useful built-in function for checking key sets, known as enforce1. Enforce1 runs a series of tests in a specific order to check that one of the following statements are true. You can find an example of this in row 38. Similar to the previous example, this example is enforcing that the caller be the owner of the admin key set. Unlike the previous example, it's also allowing the caller to be the owner of their account. Notice how it's doing this using enforce1 paired with enforce key set. Enforce1 starts a series of tests to check that any of the following lines are true. If one of them is true, the caller will gain access to run the rest of the function. If neither of them is true, the caller will get a response that their request has been denied since they're not the owner of one of the required keys. What this means is that both the admin and the owner of the account can view their account balance, but no one else can. Try running the code again in the online editor using load into REPL. You'll see the error from before. Looking down towards the bottom of the smart contract, we can see it's reading both Sarah and James's key sets as examples. This error happened because we haven't created these key sets yet. We'll create these now so that we can use these to view the balance of their account. Create each key set from within the environment to remove this error. Load this contract into the REPL one more time and you should get a message that James's balance is 275. If you're seeing this, you have successfully loaded the smart contract into the REPL with no errors. You're now ready to deploy the simple payments smart contract. I'll run through quick to update the admin key set and module name to something unique so that I can deploy this smart contract. If you're doing this for yourself, be sure to update the admin key set name to whatever name you choose in every location that it exists in the code. Also, make sure you create a key set that matches the name you choose and delete the old admin key set. Then, create a key for James and Sarah. Finally, Add each key to its corresponding key set using the checkboxes. After doing this, you can deploy the smart contract like before by selecting Deploy, choosing a target network, signing the transaction, and clicking Deploy. Once deployed, you'll see that James's balance is again 275 in the messages screen. Now that you have the appropriate keys and key sets, you can also run functions from the deployed version of this smart contract. From the Module Explorer, search for and view the module deployed in the previous screen. Remember to refresh the Module Explorer if you don't see it yet. Select the Get Balance function to attempt to view James's balance. To view the balance, select Parameters and type James as the ID. Next, sign the contract with either the Admin key or the James key. After selecting Call, you should see James's balance displayed. If you'd like to test that other keys are actually restricted for making this function call, you can also try to make this call by signing it with Sarah's key. When doing this, you should receive an error since Sarah is only permitted to view her own balance. Using these ideas, you can call any function on the smart contract by giving the proper function parameters and signing the transactions with the appropriate keys. Feel free to experiment for yourself on this and other smart contracts. That wraps up this tutorial on packed key sets. As you learned, packed key sets allow you to specify authorization to different parts of the smart contract. They help you determine which accounts have access to which parts of the programs you create. Throughout this tutorial, you created, defined, and read key sets. You also created keys, were introduced to predicate functions, and learned a few other options available to work with keys from the online editor. Finally, you experimented with running an existing smart contract that had built-in key set restrictions. Managing permissions can be complicated, and how you do it depends on the needs of your application. For that reason, it's difficult to show all the possibilities that may come up with key sets. 
That said, this tutorial gave you a strong foundation for what options are available and variations of these ideas will come up in later tutorials. Take some time now to experiment with keys and key sets, and when you're ready, come check out the next tutorial.